Well, this week we're working on uh, something a little challenging. A little bit, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always wanted to do Mexicano Catorce. Catorce, yeah. Catorce. The Mexicano Railroad actually had three of these, and number 12 was the prototype that Bachman used for developing this model. But nobody's ever done it as any of those three engines. No, and it's piqued my curiosity about the whole thing. <laughs> and so I thought, well, of the three, I actually like 14 because at one time it had uh, red uh, mainsails on it, and I <laughs> want to do that. Yes. And anyway, <laughs> that's why I picked Mexicano uh, 14, number, 14, number yeah. 14. But we need to get lettering on it, and needless to say, there are no readily available decals for doing that. No. I like the look of that. It turned out great. Oh my gosh. And uh, the thing is, those letters are painted on. Yes. I did not use dry transfer or decal or anything. Those are actually painted on using stencils exactly the same way the railroad would have done it. I like the way the rivets show through. That's just awesome. They're a little tricky to work around, uh -huh. too. <laughs> just, just a bit. But uh, we, we had Steve's daughter, Nora, here make us up a set of stencils, uh, which she does for a living. Isn't that neat? You can contact her on Facebook. Right, it's called Bark Out Loud. Yeah, that's her Facebook page. Right. And we'll put a, a link to her website too in the description. But if you want to get her to cut you either custom decals on the back of the locomotive here, she actually did decals because uh, she was concerned that she couldn't cut stencils that fine. But the, the decals worked out just fine. Right, and you can contact her on Messenger as well. Okay. And she usually responds in a short amount of time. Yep, so. and that's through Facebook again. Right. They're like, I think I measured them at less than a quarter inch. They're so small. So, okay, so I'm going to take this one here and this one here. And remember, kids, don't try this at home. I'm a professional. <laughs> The decals are pretty durable. Right, she gave me just a sample one and that thing, I stuck it to my cell phone case, it's on there for good. And and they're made to be stuck on cars and stuff out right, in, the, in the weather. Right, so I think they're pretty durable. Okay, the translation on this is capacity, agua and oil. Yeah. I had to look it up. <laughs> Aceite. 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 I know burrito and taco, <laughs> enchilada, <laughs> menudo. <laughs> I think the decal is the right way to go. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> oh my god, they're so tiny. <laughs> The one A here got ever so slightly turned, but the nice thing is until these are burnished down, uh, Nora was able to peel the A completely up and just reset it. Oh, good. So uh, <laughs> that worked out just fine. <laughs> Although it was a little bit scary for a while moving this little teeny, 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 teeny tiny A around. Right. I don't know if this would be possible working in the really small scales, certainly not in N. Maybe, but who knows. Uh, but I'll bet it could be done in HO. At least. Well, are you happy are. with that? Do you yeah. want me to straighten anything They else? came out looking just <laughs> fine. And uh, one of the few concerns I had here is as the sides are now going to be painted on, I was sort of concerned that maybe the painted on sides would look different than the decal on the back. Oh. As it happens, no concern at all. Oh, good. It looks just fine. But I had to figure out the sizing for the stencils on the side and uh, when we were doing the rotary snow plow, that turned into a small amount of an issue. But Nora's figured out a system. She can simply do these as PDFs. And then when she prints them out on her printer, they come out the exact same size they're going to come out when she cuts the stencil. As I mentioned, we use the same system on the rotary. I need to do a finishing show on the rotary. Absolutely. I, I did a couple of different shows um, 
on building this rotary and never got around to showing the finished paint job and finished tender. Anyway, Nora cut us stencils to do the lettering on this and it turned out fine and we got the process down with a little bit of experimentation, but now I feel for the most part comfortable with it. The problem being this time I'm doing white over black. Oh, gee. And I thought that could potentially be a problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I wanted to do a test. So I took the exact same uh, Mr. Color black, flat black paint, and I just shot some on some cardstock. Oh. And uh, just to use as a test. And then I let it dry for 24 hours to make sure that I wasn't going to run into an issue with the paint not being completely oh, set up. Oh, decal off and have the paint come loose too. Yep. And then uh, I took, we made up so many decals for the, for the rotary because we were having sizing issues. So I have all these spares laying around. That's a good thing. So I just grabbed one of those to use as a, as a test to see what would happen if I tried putting the white paint over the black paint. So here's the process. When Nora cuts these stencils, they're cut over a stiffer cardboard backing, which I've peeled up here. And then she places a, a low tack masking tape, just a garden variety masking tape, but the low tack variety over the front of the whole thing. And then that will allow you to peel the harder, more rigid backing away from the stencil, revealing the sticky surface of the stencil. Right, and then everything stays put a lot better too. Yeah, you know, this would be impossible without oh, the masking heaven. tape on right, the front. Right, right. So uh, the masking tape uh, goes over and then you can place that whole thing down on the model. And because the masking tape is ever so slightly translucent or transparent, you can see through it enough to see how you're aligning your letters and right. so on. And then you can burnish that down and the sticky side of the stencil attaches itself to the model. And then that allows you to peel away the low tack masking tape. Isn't that neat? And it comes right up without bringing the decal or, or rather I should say the stencil with it at all. Right. And now you've got this perfectly cut stencil stuck to the side of your model. Uh, and you can simply paint over the top of this and then peel the stencil off. Right. So it's a, it's a fairly simple process. Uh, it is necessary, of course, to mask off the outside area or you're going to get overspray all over oh, whatever you're doing. I say, yes. And so where this is a test, it didn't matter, but I wanted to make sure I wouldn't have any issues. So I used the same blue masking tape that I'm going to use on the model. And then I'm using the Tamaya lacquer, which is pretty much the same as the Mr. Color. I don't see any difference between them. But uh, the flat white, and with the white, it does tend to goop up just a little bit. So I wanted to make sure it was good and stirred before I put it in my airbrush. Oh, absolutely. So I didn't thin. I'll quite often add a little bit of thinner, but in this case, I didn't want to. And then working in very, very light coats, I first put on just a very light coat of the white. It sets up in about three minutes. So then you can come back and do another coat just like three or four minutes later. And then another coat and another coat and just continue to put uh, thin coats over this until you're not seeing any black coming through. Right. And then of course you don't want to build up so much paint that the stencil's not going to want to come up uh, properly or it looks bad. Right. I might have taken this just a hint further than I really wanted to. And then, of course, let that dry. So I let it dry for a full uh, 24 hours. Oh, good idea. Before pulling up the stencil. When I pulled up the blue masking, it tore the, the, paper. <laughs> the, card, oh. the paper. No big deal. Oh. Again, it's just a test. And now I grabbed a hold of the corner of the stencil and just started peeling that away to reveal the edge, the painted edge, and I was pretty happy with it. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's turning out just fine. There's a little dust here, but I wasn't being careful about that because, again, it's, it's just a test. Just a test. But there's the finished version right there. You can see a couple little gouges here, so I realized I'm going to have to be careful with that. I was getting in with my tweezers to pull the stencil oh. away, and you can see it's very easy to gouge the edge. So lesson learned there. Right. So here's the decal for the tender. Ooh. 
Now notice the masking tape's not on here. No. We we put our own masking tape on. She gave us uh, some masking tape to use, but this gave us a chance to really see how the sizing is going to work and make sure that it's going to align and everything looks fine. I think it looks great. So we're ready now to go ahead and put the low tack masking tape over the surface of the whole thing. And that, of course, was quite easy to do. There's no alignment or anything. It's just a matter of getting this uh, masking tape evenly distributed across the entire front side of the stencil. Right. And again, because it's somewhat transparent, it's easy to see what you're doing. Okay, and now that rigid backing can be peeled away from the decal in order to position it onto the tender. And there again, you can see through that masking tape and very carefully align the decal to make sure it's on there straight and then try to burnish the sticky side down as best as possible. This is where that line of rivets becomes a bit of an issue. Yeah, I was just going to say those things. But... And I'd had that problem with the, the rotary. Yeah. So I knew what I was up against and fortunately I have figured out a solution. Oh good, because yeah, I worry about that. Uh, yeah, because paint's going to want to get underneath where those those rivets are. Mm -hmm. So once the masking tape is peeled off, you can see here's a rivet that's right close to the edge. Mm -hmm. And there's one there, yeah. and there's one over here. And those are the ones that are going to be the problem. Oh, no kidding. Because the paint's going to want to migrate up into that little space. <laughs> Travel. So the other ones don't matter, but everywhere there's those little blisters right at the edge, I've got to make sure that those are burnished down. So a nice warm hair dryer. Right. Heat this up. It also makes the glue a little more tacky, makes the stencil a little softer. And, and you don't have to burnish it down until the rivet disappears. You just have to burnish it down until you can see that the edge is sealed. Right, I was just going to say to make sure it's sealed. That's all we care about is the edge. The rest of it's irrelevant. But you need to inspect all of those edges and make sure there's no place where it's bowed up in such a way that the paint's going to run back underneath. And then same process, light coatings with the white paint. So first, uh, uh, a, pa uh, a coating that's, that's leaving quite a bit of the black still showing through. Right. A dusting. A dusting, <laughs> yes. And then uh, I'm doing the locomotive at the same time because, again, it takes a few minutes between coats. I was going a little bit longer this time, but about five minutes between coats is all that's really necessary with these lacquers. And then ready to start peeling up masking. <sighs> This is a lot of anxiety because exactly. if, if it's gotten under the stencil, there's, it's uh, going to be a real project trying to fix that. Oh, oh I'm just holding my breath. Yeah. So uh, first up comes the masking tape, and then we start peeling the actual minutes, stencil uh, with fingers and toes crossed. Right. Actually, you couldn't cross your fingers. You wouldn't be able to pull on the decal. Right. I was videoing, but I still have my toes crossed. <laughs> Little bit of anxiety here. Uh -huh. Fortunately, unfounded, everything turned out just fine. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the crisp lines. Oh, oh, man. Every, as this was moving across, I was just going, that has come out just perfect. I was concerned, again, that black would show through, that uh -huh. there, I wouldn't get good coverage with the white. Your Not an issue. edge or something. Oh. And on the, the rotary paint had gotten up underneath the rivets, but I now that I knew that that was an issue and I knew how to fix it, this has worked just fine. No paint has, has wandered up along the rivet lines and gotten up underneath the stencil. Uh, it still creates a little bulge there, of course, because there's a break in the line because there's a rivet there. Yep, just a little bit. But I think it would happen that way on a full-size locomotive. Sure. You yeah. know, you got a little bump sticking sure. out there, and now you've painted white over mm, half of it. <laughs> yeah, so your so bump is a little off. You got a little break in the line, a little wobble in the line, because there's a rivet there. Right. Of course you're going to have that. Turn away. Do you need an exact drawing? There you go. I'll use tweezers. Now, this white... This is just crumbles yeah. that come off because the paint is kind of crumbly. And so you get crumbles. Cookie crumbles are nice, paint crumbles not, not so much. Not so much. 
What's with the chipmunks? Well, you know, this is kind of a slow process. <laughs> I see. So this is the sped up version of that. Alvin, Alvin, and the chipmunks. Anyway, as I say, it's a slow and careful process. So rather than have everybody sit around waiting for us to get this done. Oh, uh, yeah, waiting for paint to dry. Yeah, it's like <laughs> waiting for other things. Anyway. <laughs> Now, when I pulled the blue masking tape off of the one side of the locomotive, it brought the whole stencil with it. Oh. And that was actually quite handy. Yes, look at that. <laughs> at first, I was going, oh, that's not supposed to be happening. And it's like, well, I don't know why I'm worried. It's, yeah. I'm going to be pulling the stencil off anyway. So this was actually quite handy that the masking tape just brought the, the whole stencil right along with it. There it is. Now, getting the insides... Of some of these, uh, uh, like when we do the 14 here, the 14. 14. Um, and, and on the Mexicano as well, then there's those little isolated sections in the middle, and uh, you have to go very easy so you don't scratch the paint. Right. But there's the finished version. That looks wonderful. And the decal on the back exactly matches the sides. Uh, there's going to be a little light weathering over all of this, but very light. Right. Very light. Uh, for the most part, there's the finished look right That's there. a work of art. That's cool. I am so thrilled because I've been so concerned about how exactly to do this and custom decals and this and that and the other. But there it is. Painting it on there. And because it's paint, it's durable. Right. I don't have to worry about my decal line showing. I nope. don't need to worry about my dry transfer decal coming loose at some point. Well, next up, we're going to be uh, making the train crew to go inside the cab. Oh, fun. And you want to follow along with that. So if uh, you haven't been over to the channel. Oh, stick around. Yeah, stick, or, uh, stick <laughs> her around. Stick her around. Stick her around. Then you want to be a subscriber for sure. And the easy way to become a subscriber is to click on the upcoming blue button. Zoink right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this very, very fun and informative video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Sunday. Right. With a Sunday show. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.